हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन इन दिस प्लेलिस्ट ऑफ क्रेडिट रिस्क लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देर इज अ रीजन फॉर दैट बिकॉज वेन एवर अ बैंक इज गिविंग अ क्रेडिट कार्ड और दे आर ट्राइंग टू कैलकुलेट हु इज गोइंग टू डिफॉल्ट both the situations they have to answer in either yes or no it cannot be maybe so in such cases we only use logistic regression as a best suited algorithm i'll tell you why because when somebody is taking loan there are only two probability whether that person will be able to pay the loan or not able to pay the loan either that person will be giving us the money or not simple right so logistic regression is a best suited one now let me take you through the ins and out of logistic regression and this is going to be a very important video on logistic regression why you need to learn logistic regression before moving into probability of default you will understand it by the end of this video so don't skip this video just be with me till the end of this video end to end now let me take you forward directly talking about the logistic regression without wasting your time so guys let's talk about logistic regression specifically for the probability of default which we are covering in this course okay so first of all who are like totally new to this concept so for them uh let's make them understand so all of you can first focus that logistic regression is a type of supervised learning number 1 it's a supervised learning algorithm second logistic regression is a type of classification problem now what is classification problem let me tell you classification problems and this will give you answer why we are using uh, logistic regression for pd okay so supervised learning where you are learning with a supervisor okay unsup there are two type of learning supervised and unsupervised so here we are implementing basically supervised learning now classification problem what does that mean classification problem means where you can classify your problems in either let's say yes or no here you have some past data in the supervised learning and on the basis of your historical events you will predict the future that is the number of default people are going to take in your bank for example in credit risk okay now these are two important things which you should know but there is one more type of regression which usually you would be hearing that is linear regression so i'll tell you about that also a bit because this is the only video where which i'm talking uh, in detail uh, for this specific course okay so logistic regression and linear regression are quite different okay so linear regression you have x axis and y axis so you have a dependent variable independent variable and the output line will go like this and that will be a continuous variable like for example this is your height y is your weight or this can be your age also so with your age or with your height increases your weight will also increase continuously and you all know what is a mathematical equation for that y is equal to mx plus c so that is the whole equation for linear regression now in the case of logistic regression it is a it's not a continuous output so in logistic regression you will get only a yes or no default non default let's say if you talk about emails so genuine fraud there is always a classification that's why it's called a classification problem now in classification the third point will be it's all about your sigmoid function so we calculate the sigmoid function here and which is nothing but probability so that is a reason we use logistic regression for probability of default in any of the model whether that is ifrs 9 or that is your basel model okay now how we'll proceed let's talk about more in detail so primarily i told you the graph of linear regression now what is the graph or graph of logistic regression looks like so you have let's say weight and then you have whether the person is fat or not this is a layman language similarly instead of weight let's say the person 
age is there here we will talk about default so whether this age people are defaulting in our uh, bank or not so here you will have some data points here then you will have some data points here maybe and then you will have some data points here what are data points data points are output okay so i'll tell you the process also but how logistic regression graph looks like is a s that's how it looks like and then the median if we go to the medium level so we bifurcate this graph into three sections this is let's say class a this is your class b and on the line if something is coming on the line that is your class c that's why it's type of a classification problem now when you are calculating a logistic regression model for that what is the equation you need so primarily you need x what is x just comment whether it's a independent variable or dependent variable it's a independent variable now again it's called a feature also we do feature selection right so that is your x now how you calculate x so there would be a constant plus b1 multiply by x1 plus b2 which is again constant multiply by x2 similarly bn multiply by xn this is your x value which is your eventually independent variable now once you have the value of x so we calculate the sigmoid just remember this all mathematics guys this is very important and the most easiest one on internet you will not find it that easy so sigmoid function what it talks about p equal to we called p why because we are calculating probability okay so p equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to power minus x x is what x is this equation what is e e is a constant it's called euclid's constant constant the value of e is 2.718 which is a constant value so on the basis of this you calculate the value of your sigmoid function which is ultimately probability and probability always falls between 0 to 1 just remember this zero is if the event is not happening one is if the event is happening what is the event in the case of probability of default default non-default so if your p is zero it's non-default customer if your probability is one then this is a default one one more very important thing if you are basically seeing that in your output you are getting a probability let's say p is coming 0 0.17 so then we calculate it into percentage like let's say it's 17 percent what does this mean that your customer in bank have 70 percent 17 percent chances that he will default or not so default the what does that mean that the customer will default 17 percent there are chances that the customer will default okay now there are some applications for this use basically i'll make it more easy what are the use of this logistic regression so obviously i told you in the case of fraud if you want to check whether the fraud is there or not now in the case of default so this is from banking so it's either default yes or default no there are some other use also let's say for healthcare industry if we talk about if a disease diagnosis is happening so whether the person have the disease or not only two cases will be there there it cannot be possible that a person is having cuff or not having having cuff it's only possible yes or no but the possibility is not there the person will say i have partial cuff or doctor will say partial cuff that is not like there right in the case of let's say emails also if you check your emails so you have spam emails you have some uh, malware or sometime they send you uh, viruses so it's either a spam or non-spam so in all these cases you can easily use what logistic regression model now 
let's check the graph which I made. Okay. Now after understanding this equation, which you all have seen, right? Uh, this equation. Now, as per this equation, I made this class A, class B. So the, let's say class A is talking about the people of who are likelihood to do default in bank. And class B will talk about non-default. So that's how basically this overall structure works here. And then let's move down a bit. So this was all about the logistic regression at the meantime. Now you have to understand the features which you are going to actually use in this course also. And in layman language also, if somebody asks you what are the inputs or features you are going to use to calculate the probability of default. So I'll give you some very common names which are used everywhere. Now the age of the customer, then loan amount it's very important then the income of the customer how much they are earning so this will tell about the customer whether the customer will be able to pay the loan or not then number of default in past whether the customer has defaulted in past in payment let's say the customer ha was having any credit card with us as a bank so whether that customer was a good customer or he was not paying sometime the emis so that will tell about the behavior of the customer. Okay. Then we take the credit score from bureau. Like all these credit bureau sell the credit score of the customer. Bank will pay the money to credit bureau. For example, Equifax, Experian, Sybil, TransUnion, all of them sell the data, our data to the banks. Okay. This is very important. Then overdues days, like the amount is overdue from how many days that is very important. Then the employment status or you can say employment type whether the customer is a government employee or a private company employee if the customer is government employee all of us know that the government employee get the loans way easy because they are never going to lose their job right so in the same way these are some of the very important feature selection you do and this is a very common question that how do you do feature selection so this is known as your feature selection. And before that you do so many calculations, which you will uh, understand from the previous video in the fold feature selection. Now this feature selection is very important. Okay. So you can understand the other tricks and all the ways to do the feature selection in the previous video in the same course. On that note, I will, I want to tell you that what are the decision bank takes on the basis of this PD calculation bank decisions. So that you should know that why we are calculating PD. It's only not for the uh, prediction of default and non-default on the basis of the probability. If a customer is highly probable of default, the bank will tell them higher interest rate for themselves, higher interest rate. So that bank is re re taking more interest from that compared to the rest of the people. Second action bank will take bank will reject loan for such people reject loan depending on the size of the loan and other factor, then bank has to fail. Uh, bank doesn't have to fail the Basel. We call it Basel norms. It's very important. You can call it either Basel or IFRS. So bank has to follow the guidelines provided by the governing body of that country. So that is very important. And the most important make capital arrangements. If people will default, so bank has to absorb the shock. So bank has to maintain that much of capital with them. On this note, this whole video of logistic regression, I am completing. And this is the whole and soul about all the logistic regression, which we are going to use in this course. Before I close this video, I have a bonus tip for you. Sometime there are some important interview question, which they ask. So there are two questions. Number one, linear regression versus, versus logistic, logistic regression. So what should be the answer of this? Okay. The output is 
continuous here as i told you output continuous in logistic regression output is binary either yes or no okay now use case of linear regression let's let's say sales prediction because it's a continuous thing sales will either increase or decrease so it's a constant thing now logistic regression default and non default example default and no default function which we use here is y is equal to mx plus c very simple here you use sigmoid so this is your question number 1 now second question which is asked so many times logistic regression inside logistic regression what is the role of sigmoid function so the answer i'll tell you role of sigmoid so you have to answer that sigmoid function provide the value from 0 to 1 in the form of probability that's what we want to calculate because probability will tell always yes or no there is no chance of maybe okay now probability is greater than 0.5 that is a positive sign probability less than 0.5 Uh, up to zero is not a positive sign from the perspective of default. So that's what you have to answer in this case. Now, on that note, I would wrap up this video. I hope you like this video. If you don't understand something specifically, please make sure to comment, reach out to me, tell me that we have not understand this point. I'll make that point very much clear because this logistic regression will be used in the next upcoming video. So you have to understand it to understand the probability of default. Probability of default is either probability of default, yes or no. That's why we are using the logistic regression. On that note, if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. please try to share this video with as many as people you can thank you so much all the best i'll see you in the next video